All right, guys, welcome back to Passing Money. So this is part four, and I got a question for Kirby that I actually don't know. So um, when you started to learn about stocks and how to invest, you were in the military. Um, so was there was there any ever thought in your mind, like wanting, like initially when you had first joined, wanting to retire through the military? maybe the same way your wife did with the pension plan and everything like that, or and I may be stepping ahead, but like, or did you start to learn to invest and you were like, no, I'm not doing that. Um, no, when I, when I, when I was in the military, so going back to, you know, part one, when you said, um, what was my motivation to, you know, change the way I was living when I was in the military, I was down in Fort Hood. I did see some people shaking and moving. You know, I saw, you know, I saw one soldier. He was uh, buying real estate or, you know, his wife was buying real estate, but he was like one rank higher than me. But I didn't have the insight or maybe I was still too caught up in my hood mentality to not ask. You know, I didn't want to ask, hey, how you do it? Because, you know, Back in the hood, if you're doing something somebody else doing, oh, man, you bite when you jocking off me, you doing that. So I still had that mentality. So I didn't want to ask him. You know, I just admired from afar. Like, oh, wow, that's cool. He he owns like a whole like street block of, you know, duplexes. I don't know where he's doing now, but I saw that, you know, he drove better cars than mostly everybody in the unit, including people that was higher ranking than him. Uh, I saw that he he didn't really have a pair you know, he he followed the military structure, but he really didn't have a care about, you know, get promoted, moving up the, you know, corporate ladder and, you know, in the military. And but again, I I didn't. I knew, so I knew it was possible, but I didn't know. I didn't know the other side of it because, like I said, I didn't want to, you know, ask that at that time. I thought that, oh, you can't you can't ask people about their money or how they do stuff and what they do. So. I just admired far, but I knew it was possible. But again, I didn't know, you know, his wife's side of it. I didn't know, you know, if his wife, you know, you know, came from a Fortune 500 family or something crazy like that. So again, I didn't ask, but I saw it and I, and I saw how he looked at it. But so, yes, when I would join the military, it was 100%. Uh, after I say in the middle of basic training, I wasn't even at a unit yet. I said, oh, no, I'm doing this all. I'm doing this the rest of my life, man. And I, of course, I didn't even know how the pension structure was. I was just looking like, hey, I'm going to get a paycheck every day. And then it was, it's funny. So what I, the thing that I found and for everybody, uh, I'm not a, you know, complete nerd. I have vices just like everybody else have vices. So what I did figure out while I was there in the military was, I learned how to play poker, you know, poker, like you see on TV, you know, you see the games on TV and stuff like that. So I started learning how to play that. And then um, I got fairly decent at it. So and then I got fairly decent enough that I was making more money playing poker than I was making in the military. And then so I had this big, ambitious goal of uh, I'm not going to say I was doing right with the money. I was making more, but just blowing it other places. I, I didn't have I didn't have a clue at that time. And so what I did was. When it was time close to me to, you know, ETS or whatever, uh, I had an option to stay in or get out. And I was like, no, I'm about to be the best poker player in the world. You cannot. Uh, the thing is, stupid decision on the that concept there because I realized I wasn't that good at all. But that was one of the best decisions. It was like a stupid decision that turned out well. I mean, if I didn't get out of the military at that time, and this is before I learned about investing. Uh, if I didn't get out of the military at that time, I would never have been able to buy the house during the financial crisis and go through everything to make me, you know, hone in. Could it have been other ways that I figured it out? Yeah, but it's something about knowing you're going to have a paycheck that makes you pause on doing what you need to do. So I needed to go through that crucible of suffering to get out of, you know, my landscape. So again, so now I'm out of the military and now can't get a job. I can't get a job. Um, flat broke. And then, like I tell people, I was working loss prevention at Burlington Co-Factory making $9 an hour. 
I was in, and then that's when gas prices was four fifty, and I had a truck. So I was in, and the uh, job was like an hour away, one way. So I literally all my money from the paycheck went to gas to put in the truck. So, so, but that was the only that was the only job I can get. But I just wanted to say I had a job, but I was stupid broke. And then, um, so what I did was it was a National Guard unit. And for people that's in the military, they know it's a crazy idea to even think about. It was a National Guard unit deploying. Um, and then so I said, oh, let me go join this unit so I can deploy. And I joined the unit to deploy. And that started my journey going into finance. But once I was in the National Guard, uh, it was it was never uh, ideal that, oh, I'm going to stay there 20 years or something like that. It was just I just needed I, I deployed just to pay off debt. And then while I was there deployed, paying off that, that's when I learned about investing and things like that. So it, you know, it cascaded, it cascaded it more uh, going forward. But yeah, so when I first started off, yeah, it was retired. Then I learned per poker. Then I thought, oh, this is it. I'm game time, baby. I'm going to Vegas. And uh, I ain't even making out stick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, I can. So I can kind of I can understand that. Like, um, I mean, I wasn't in the military, but I can understand that mentality because, I mean, for me going into work, too, I thought, you know, if I could, you know, because I moved up pretty quick uh, within like two years, I was already like I went from like dispatcher, shuttle clerk, assistant shuttle manager. Like I moved up very fast and I was like, oh, man, I can make a career out of this and all that. And you know, now I'm just looking at it like I just need to make more money so I can invest in more assets and then get out of here kind of thing. And I, I see that was kind of your mentality too, going back into deployment. So you can just, you just needed to get out of your situation back at home, your financial situation. Um, And I think, yeah, I think using that mentality when people, because I've had this conversation with, before with people, when people can have that mentality of just, just look at your job as, you know, a shovel to get out of the situation you're in, you know, because you want to create your own life. You don't want to live a life based off of what a company is going to determine for you. And when you can just see as a job as just a source of income and use that just to get out of your situation and create the own, the life that you want, then I think you'll be more at peace or you'll have more, you'll find your purpose in life by doing that. Yeah, and, and you're right. So I I use that I use that deployment to you know pay off credit card debt, pay off the truck that I I had, um, and and FYI, it wasn't it wasn't I wasn't ever in a in a position. I don't want to say I wasn't in a position because if I didn't do that, I probably would have lost the truck. You know, I I didn't already kick payments from like payment was due like this month. I like put it on the back end of the payment. I was, you know, credit card transferring over just so I can, you know, put a couple months between me and the next, you know, billing cycle and stuff like that. Um, but you know, once I used that deployment to pay off all that debt, I didn't go back into debt. I didn't go back into debt at all. And I when I came back from that deployment, I had no money, but I had no debt. And I didn't have a job, but, and that's why this one of the first things, first few things I always, I mean, I said to you and I always tell the people is when I was doing dumb stuff with money, money could never stay around. But what I always tell people is if you do right by money, money will find ways to, you will find ways to attract money. And I mean, it was literally night and day. I leave the military uh, two deployments, no job. Only job I can get is being uh, a flashlight cop at Burleson Co. Factory. And then I deploy again, and then now I'm heavily in debt, and that's all I can get. Then I deploy again, pay off my debt, and then I come back, and then I wasn't even back less than a month, and I had a job working at the Toyota factory building Toyota trucks in San Antonio. And then all that money was, and then so I didn't have any debt. And then, I mean, you know the story about getting in the house and then getting out of the house. Um, and, you know, it's funny. It's one thing about this house. I, I, I probably failed to mention it to you. 
Uh, this before, you know, everybody here subject to, subject to, and all this stuff. Now that's the new in phase thing, you know. That's how I got out of the house. A guy named Tim Spires. Uh, Tim, you watching this video? Hey, what's up? But when we was trying to sell a house, there wasn't no houses selling in San Antonio when the market was crashing. When I say I sold the house for exactly what I paid for it, and I give credit to Tim because Tim asked me, he's like, how much do you want to sell the house for? And I just said, man, I just want to just pay whatever I owe so I don't owe nobody. And then he said, okay, I'll do it to you. Do it for you. I mean, I could have said, you know, fit 10000 20000 more because he even said, are you sure? I'm like, yeah. And then so, but that's what we did. We did a subject two. I didn't know what it's called subject two until now, but that's what we did. So he took over the payments. We signed it over. He was a trustee of the house. He took over payments, paid insurance and all that. Then me and my me and my wife, we moved into an apartment that we paid eight hundred dollars less than we was paying the mortgage. And then so he was he was making the payments and he was and it was on subject two as i.e. it was under my name, but he was making the payments that lasted for. That lasted until I moved here to Florida. So 2014. So from 2010 to 2014, he was just making the payments and. And then he finally sold the house uh, after a while, but that's how I got out of it. Subject two, so that's why I know it works in certain situations. But I didn't know it was subject two then, but that's yeah, the yeah. term we use now. Yeah, but um, but yeah, so that's what it was. But so we did right by money, and then it just started cascading. So we worked. I got the job at Toyota, and then we start saving, investing, saving, investing, saving, investing that money, and then I just start getting job offers from other places to do more. Now I started working for the State Department, saving, investing, saving, investing. Now, you know, now I have mailbox money. I go to the mailbox now. You know, most people go to the mailbox to look for bills. I just look to see when the check comes in. You know, make it like, hey, did the check come in? Because it was just the craziest thing. I just seen checks coming in and yeah. from different avenues, from ATM machines, from, you know, businesses and things like that. It's just a, it's a great thing to see. But you got to do right by money and they'll, they'll keep finding it. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, and I've been told that like, oh, you're just good with it. Like, you know, you just it's like money is attracted to you. But really, it's just who you surround yourself with. It's what are you what are you what situations are you putting yourself in every day? And that's why, like, I don't I don't give people excuses because like. I didn't give myself the excuse of how I grew up to be like. You know, do make stupid choices. I was one where I was like. I was surrounded by a lot of stupid choices and I was like, I was the one where I was like, I don't want to mess up my life. I'm just going to stay in my little shell, you know? And I just, I I think that your life is a result of the choices that you make. It's, I mean, that should be commonly known and it's not commonly known. You know, someone that may grow up poor, may do, you know, dumb things. They might sell drugs. They might get involved with the wrong crowd. Um, I was just one that just saw everything going on and I just kept to myself. And then, you know, what attracted me was making more money was, you know, diving and indulging in, you know, business and investing and stuff like I wanted to find an escape from, you know, where I came from. And it was just always like the fantasy and the idea of like, if I had enough money, I could literally just buy whatever lifestyle I wanted. Like I could, um, like, and it was always, like, extreme ideas, too. Like, seeing some house in, like, middle of, like, mountains in Italy. I'm like, what the heck? People live in, like, another planet in these areas. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, I want to do something like that. Like, so, but it was like, you know, what do I got to do to get to a point like that? And, you know, so it's like, I mean, when me and Kirby talk about, like, every day, every second, like, I mean, I go to bed thinking about, like, even if it's just thinking about it, you know, just thinking about finance, thinking about what I need to do, what are the next steps I got to take? I wake up thinking the same thing. What do I got to do? I wake up, post a video of the channel on Instagram, like immediately when I wake up, you know, it's like, it's constantly, I'm doing something to constantly move forward to the next goal. And that's just, that's just what you have to do. Um, I think people, they want to find a vice or an escape from their reality but their escape is entertainment. But if you can, if you could find a way to where your life is entertaining enough with just what you are doing, the work you're putting in, then you don't have to feed into all the bull crap that they put out in the world, all the, 
movies and propaganda and all the other stuff that there is to waste your time with video games and all that those are that's just my opinion i know a bunch of gamers might get pissed at me but that's i just think you know it's a waste of time and, and you're right and while we wrap this video up i want to give a shout out to the drug dealers in Detroit. and i'm not glorifying it at all only reason why i'm giving a shout out to them uh, of course i'm not gonna say no say no name don't want to get nobody indicted um but the reason why i'm giving a shout out to them because I could have easily, when I say easily, easily been a corner boy. Easily. Um, all of the people that I knew, like friends I grew up with, they became corner boys, you know, selling drugs and stuff like that. And I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, no, I never wanted to do that. That's a damn lie. I'm a product of the environment that I was in. I didn't. Everybody did it, so it was normal. Uh, but the day I went out there, tried to get on the block, you know, try to get on. Uh, I went over there, talked to the big homie. I was like, hey, man, I want to do this. And I'll never forget that day. I left my house. I walked. This is how close I was to the corner of this drug spot. I walked. I left my house two houses down. That's where they was at, standing on the corner. And I went up there and I talked to him. Like, yeah, I want to get on. All my friends was already on. You know, all the people that I you know knew in the neighborhood, went to school with, they was already on. And I was maybe 14, 15 at the time. I mean, all the 14 and 15 year olds in my hood was, you know, they were standing on the corner. So I went over there, talked to the big homie and and I told him and he looked at me and he said, man, get your ass off this corner. And I looked at him like crazy, like because I was confused, not I wasn't trying to size up to him. I'm 14, 15 years old. You know, I, I was just looking crazy. Like, what the heck are you talking about? And then he said, he said, no, nah. he was like, no, nah, play exact words was. No, nah, player, you ain't going out like that. He was like, you got something better to do. He was like, you're a football dude. Go stick to football. But the crazy part was it was guys that I played football with that were standing on the corner also. But they said, no, nah, you're a football dude. Get off the corner. And they said, if I ever see you on this corner again, we're going to have a problem. Me knew they was going to just beat me up. I ain't never go back on the corner again. But he could have easily, he could have easily just be like, oh, yeah, man, come in. We know you. I mean, they knew me. You know, they'd be at my football game. So they knew who I was. So it wasn't like they thought I was some op or something like that. But they, he just said, no, get off the corner. You're a football dude. And that was the little small inkling that changed my life from standing on the corner and probably getting in trouble just like the rest of them did and not. So I could have easily been him. So shout out to that guy who uh, told me to get my ass off to these damn streets and stay in the house. <laughs> That's what I did. So thanks a lot. Hell yeah. <laughs> but all right, guys, with all that being said, if you like these videos, if you like these series, if you want us to do something more like this, let us know down below in the comments. Like, subscribe, share, and we'll see you guys in the next video.